friends, my name is Kayla Roach. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know, I am a huge fan of colubrids. I love colubrids, especially brightly colored ones who have unique features. And I'm happy to announce that I got a new colubrid. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, unless you recognized it from the intro. If not, you're in for a surprise because this is a really cool species of snake. In this video, I'll be bringing you along how I set up and design the enclosure for this snake and then the unboxing and introduction process. This was a magical moment for me, such a cool species of snake. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. For this snake's enclosure, I will be using a 20 gallon high, which measures 24 by 12 by 16 inches. For the background, I will be using a cork panel, measuring it and cutting it to size so that I can adhere it to the back of the enclosure. To do so, I will be using the Gorilla Construction Adhesive. This product comes in really handy. I use it all the time. If you're interested in trying it out, there's an Amazon affiliate link in the description. Next, I'll be using Hydroton to create a drainage layer. I'm also using fiberglass mesh screening to prevent any soil from falling into the drainage layer. The first element to my substrate is wood charcoal. Charcoal is very beneficial to soil as it increases the soil's ability to retain nutrients, it improves moisture drainage, and prevents mold and odors. Another nutrient-rich material I'll be incorporating into my substrate is the Exoterra substratum, which is a natural volcanic soil collected from the mineral-rich foothills of the Aso volcano in Japan. Aside from that, my substrate is comprised of organic topsoil, sphagnum moss, and peat moss. I also have dwarf white isopods that'll help break down any organic waste. Since this species of snake is endemic to sub-Saharan Africa, I decided to choose some species of plants that are also native to Africa. I'm using a variety of spider plants and peace lilies. This is a more arboreal species of snake and spends a lot of time climbing shrubs, low bushes, and trees. So I'm offering lots of climbing opportunities with some branches. Next, I'll be adding a layer of leaf litter to my substrate. I'm using the leaf litter that's included in the Exoterra forest floor. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the unboxing. I want to note that this was a local pickup and the animal was not shipped in this box. It would have needed a lot more stuffing. I present to you the Philothamnus irregularis. This species has multiple common names, but one that it is most known for is the African bush snake. This specimen is a male and is approximately one year old. This species is a non-venomous colubrid that is native to Africa, like I previously mentioned. These are typically shy and very nervous snakes that are very high strung, flighty, and quick to get away from any danger, as you can see by this individual. These snakes have very slender and athletic bodies, which make them very agile and give them the ability to move very quickly in their environment. Being diurnal, sight-hunting tree snakes mean that they are incredibly self-aware as they use their vision to track any movement around them. That being said, they are more likely to eat live prey in captivity than frozen thawed because they are attracted to quick movements. Now this typically applies to all snakes, but this species in particular is incredibly stubborn when it comes to their prey. In their natural habitat, this species typically feeds on smaller reptiles and amphibians like geckos, anoles, small frogs or toads, and even certain insects like grasshoppers. This individual has been feeding on large crickets and live feeder anoles before I purchased him. 
I will be continuing this feeding routine as I know it is successful with this individual. However, once this snake has acclimated to its new environment, I would like to try introducing rodents as they are more readily available as feeders. Unfortunately, this might be quite difficult and require some assist feeding for a while because like I previously mentioned, these snakes are very stubborn with their diets. Being that this species is diurnal and has such a high metabolism, it's very important for them to have an efficient basking spot, access to UVB, and very bright lighting. This species has been found to thrive under high light output in captivity, which makes sense since they are such sight-oriented snakes. That being said, I provided my snake with a basking bulb, a UVB bulb, and two high output LED bulbs. In their native habitat, this species is often mistaken for a species of green mamba because they look so similar. Overall, I'm incredibly grateful to have this snake in my care. I'm in love with his bright green coloration, those blue hues on his face and on his scales, and can't forget to mention those big yellow eyes. He's just so beautiful. So that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. It means so much to me. I'm so flattered by all the support I've been getting, and it means the world to me that you choose to watch my videos. If you have any name suggestions for the snake, please drop them down in the comment section because I am stuck. I've thought of one name that I'm sort of set on, which is Scyther, because that's a Pokemon I was really into as a child. It's a green Pokemon, this is a green snake. You see what I'm getting at here? <laughs> I'm still not set on it. So if you have any suggestions, please drop them down. Try to make them a little creative because I don't like basic standard pet names per se, like Buddy or Daisy, which is the name of one of my dogs. So I don't know why I threw her under the bus, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Thank you for watching and I will see you shortly because I have some really cool videos coming up.